Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Charlie Eugene back with another video. Today I have a ultra small form factor desktop by HP. This is called the ProDesk 600 G2 Mini. Uh, got this back at Micro Center for about 150 bucks. And I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to upgrade this system along with the IO. Today I'm gonna be swapping out the processor. This one came with the i5 6500T. I wanna put in the i7 6700T. I've already maxed out the RAM. I've already got M.2 in here and a 2.5 inch that I'm gonna be taking out because I don't need it in here. And that's pretty much it. I wanna show you guys how easy it is to upgrade this desktop. Now, let me start with the cosmetics first. Let me start out with the IO. If you look at the front, you have your headphone jack, you have a combination headphone microphone jack here, along with USB-C. Um, I have connected my external solid state drive and it does power that, but, and I, and I think I've tried charging the cell phone and it doesn't work. I'm not sure. I don't think this is PD. I don't think it's power delivery, but it does send power enough to get a solid state drive going. So I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that. Now on, on the right of that, you have two USB three ports here along with your power button there. And that's pretty much the front. So it has plenty of ins and outs and ports on the front. Moving over to the back, you've got display port, VGA, and another display port. So you can connect three monitors to this device, which is awesome. You got four USB three ports here. You have your ethernet port along with your power adapter connection there. So it has plenty of IO, plenty of ins and outs for you to connect stuff to this machine. Uh, I love, I love this, these small form factors. They're desk space savers, man. I love, I love it. This thing is really quiet as well. So let's, let's get to opening this thing up and I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to open this thing. It's connected by one screw. That's it. And this is spring loaded. So I don't think it, it fully comes off. So I'll show you how easy it is to do that. And I've already been opening this thing. Like I said, I've already changed out the, solid state drives. I've already upgraded the RAM. I've, I'm maxed out at 32 gigs, but I want to get this i5 out of here. That's why I covered up the sticker because there's no i5 anymore. I'm going to be putting the i7 in there. So I put the G skill sticker, which is th the memory that I have in here. All right. So one screw, which is spring loaded. Oh yeah. Be mindful. When you do take this off, flip it over. It's easier to get it the case off over. Start it like this. And then once you get it started, flip it back over and then take it out very slow. Some of these parts in this uh, motherboard are kind of loose. So that's the easy way to do it. Be gentle with it. You ain't got to go too crazy with it. See how see how it's, it's, it's acting a little crazy. So kind of just flip it over, pull it out. I don't know what's keeping this thing attached. Just be very careful. There we go. There we go. All right. So just be careful with that, with that process. All right. So this is the insides of this small machine, which I, like I said, man, this thing is upgradable. You can change out your, your 2.5, but beneath that, below that is the M.2 slot underneath the fan is the Ram. And then underneath here is your processor. So you can upgrade this thing. This thing can hold up to 32 gigs of DDR4 along with two different drives, M.2 and the 2.5, and you can swap out your chip. All right, so that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So it's very easy to get into this thing. Let me uh, pull, this, pull this drive out. I'm gonna be taking this drive out and putting this into another system. So I don't really need um, two drives in here. So I'm going to be pulling this out and setting this to the side. So mine is missing one screw, but you're going to need to take these screws out. These keep the drives in place. Very easy. Very easy. Man, these machines are awesome. I got this for 150 bucks at Micro Center around Christmas time. And uh, I'm pretty sure you can find it cheaper if you look on Amazon or eBay or anywhere else. But 150 bucks is not bad. Like I said, if I would highly recommend getting yourself the i7 version so you don't have to change up the processor like I'm doing. But I was being cheap at that time and I didn't want to pay the money, but then I realized 
that I want the i7. But the i5 was really snappy as well. So if you're happy with an i5 and you're not doing anything that's going to need the, the, the speed, then go ahead and keep the i5 in there. All right, so underneath this uh, hard drive tray is the M.2 slot, which I already have in there. Um, it's only, I don't want to take it up to show you guys, but honestly, it's only three screws that hold this tray in place. And underneath that is a slot for the 2280 M.2 along with the Wi-Fi slot as well. This one did, did not come with the Wi-Fi card, so, but I'm cool with that. But yeah, underneath here, like literally underneath here, once you take this off, you have access to your M.2, okay? But I don't wanna take that out because I'm gonna leave this tray on there in case I do wanna pop back 2.5 inch drive back in there. All right, so why I made this video, we're gonna get this i7 6700T installed in here now put disclaimer out there please do not buy an i7 6700 without the t it will not work you'll get all kind of errors i did that it has to be t has to be 6700t i5 6500t it has to have that t at the end do not buy uh the one without the T, because they, they do have the same socket size, the socket 1151, but it will not work. It needs that T in there. All right, so let me, um, let me, this might be a little too small. I brought the wrong kit. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to get the right size flathead to get this off here. All right, so. This is easy. It's about three screws in here holding this in place. These are also spring loaded, so these don't, don't fully come off. So you don't have to worry about them fully coming out. I'm not even using the right size flathead, but it still works. As long as I'm not stripping the, uh, the nut, I should be all right. all right. That should be good enough. So pretty easy. You can, you can move, remove this to the side here. Just be gentle with it. Underneath that, you see, this is where your RAM is. Two RAM slots of DDR4 there. Like I said, M.2 underneath this 2.5 uh, drive tray. And that's pretty much it. Let me show you, bam, take that off. I did a good job of putting thermal paste in there, which I'm gonna clean before I put on the new chip. And that's it. That's why I love these small machines because you can you can access everything easily and you can upgrade it. Excuse me. Very easy to do it. If I can do it, you can do it. All right, let's get this off here. I might have put a little too much uh, thermal paste. All right. Let's remove this. I'll clean this chip off later because I'm not going to be using it. I might put this on eBay and see if I can make about 20, 30 bucks off this i5. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm set that to the side. And I'm going to clean this off because I don't want to. You always want to clean the old thermal paste off. Even though this is fairly new, I just put, I just, um, put thermal paste new thermal paste on here about a month ago. So this is this is fresh, but I still want to clean it and put some new one on there. All right, so here's the chip, i7 chip. For people that have never uh, upgraded or swapped out chips, there's always on the corner of here, there's a small arrow. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a small arrow. Let me hold this up close to the camera so you guys can see it. It's a small arrow on the corner there, and that lets you know the direction of the chip that needs to be inserted onto the motherboard. Also, there's another arrow, there's another arrow right there that shows you that's where that arrow goes. So that shows you how to put the drive in, I mean, excuse me, how to put the processor in correctly. All right, very easy to do this. If I can do it, you can do it. All right, place this in there, the right direction. Bam. Yep, is it seated properly? Yep. All right, cool. So now what I want to do is clean that old thermal paste off the heat, the heat sink, get that off and reapply some new uh, 
uh, thermal paste and that's pretty much it man and I just wanted to share how easy it is I want to make this video too long but I want to share how easy it is to upgrade these systems man these are pretty dope machines um, another thing if you're going to be a game if you're a heavy gamer this machine is not going to work out for you it has a integrated Intel uh, graphics 530 I think so that chipset that graphics chip will not be enough for you to play any modern games but if some light gaming some older older games you should be able to do it as well as editing video if you're editing 4k video this is not the machine i'm pretty sure you could do it but i wouldn't recommend doing that uh, excuse me for the light my, my light went out it's always something man always something um yeah back to the 4k stuff so if you're editing 4k video don't do it do not buy this. Some, some some 1080 video editing, cool. You'd be able to get by with 1080, but 4K, I wouldn't recommend buying this machine if you're going to be doing that. All right, so this is the way I put thermal paste on it. I just put a big circle in the middle, and that's it. That's it. I put a big circle in the middle, and now I'm going to clean off the old thermal paste. And sorry about the lighting, man. This 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 nice light that I have, battery does not last that long at all. I don't know. I think something's wrong with the battery. It should last a lot longer than that. Let me get something to wipe this down. Well, actually, I'll start with the uh, Q-tips. See if I can get some of this up with the Q-tips. Always something, man. Let's clean this off. Yeah, that's not going to work out. Let me, uh, give me one second, guys. I'm going to go grab something a little bit better to get this old thermal paste off of this heat sink. Give me one second. All right, I'm back. So going to use uh, this rag to get this old paste off and then I'll use rubbing alcohol to kind of clean it up. You always want to apply new thermal paste even though you can tell this is I just put this stuff on. All right so that looks a lot better so clean it up and um, have some rubbing alcohol with some q-tips to really get it clean don't gotta overdo it but yeah man that's pretty much it man that's pretty much it i love these machines man I'm a, I'm a huge fan of small desktops that's why i got a mac mini and when i do buy when i do use windows i use small desktops like this because i don't really game i'm not a gamer i used to build desktops all the time but i don't really do that anymore so i buy these small form factors just because they're powerful now, and they save space on your desk. All right, so cool. That's it. This is clean. I'm going to wipe it down with the rag, pop it back in, and that's pretty much it, man. Sorry, like I said, sorry about my lighting, man. This this light that I have does not last long. I'm going to order another light. This one keeps going out. Every time I try to make a video, it goes out. It's always something, right? All right, cool, that's good enough. Ain't gotta go crazy with it. So let's lock this down again. Lock it down. That's it. And the direction, follow the direction of the screws, which is like this. All right, bam. Tighten it down. Let me sit back down, tighten it. Tighten it down. All right. Okay. All right. Put this back in and we are done. 
This has these grooves that has to go into. I think the grooves are yeah, right there, and that's it. That's it. Also, I've already cleaned this fan, but if you know if your fan's dirty, get yourself a uh, air dust can. I would I wouldn't let it spin freely. I would hold it, spray around, get all that dust out of that fan. But I, mine looks pretty clean. Or you can do the toothbrush and brush, hold this and brush it. Get all that, get all that uh, dust out of there. And that's it, guys. Um, if you got any questions or comments about this machine, about how to add RAM, how to put your uh, solid state drives in there, whether it's the 2.5 or the M.2, feel free to ask me questions. I mean, like I said, this thing is very, very easy layout. Very easy layout. And that's pretty much it, man. You pop the pop the face back on the machine. This can be challenging sometimes. I'll be honest with you guys, because you gotta get this little ring, this little loop underneath. The... Oh man, this, this is the hardest part. This is the hardest part. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I got lucky today. I got lucky today. And that's it. Pop this screw back in, and you're done. Anyway, man, this is Charlie Eugene. Just wanted to share how easy it is to upgrade this HP ProDesk 600 G2 Mini. Great machine, very affordable. Grab one if you can. It's nice. Anyway, leave comments. Click that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys on my next video. Later.